Welcome to our magic show today. I'm so glad you could join because today we are going to do something very important. Something I have practiced for ages. For today I'm going to show you how to distinguish meat and cheese using this magical crystal ball and the words from this magic book. Zero technology involved. The ancient art of magic will allow me to gain control over what I eat. You see, I don't eat meat, but I like fish, but I don't eat meat. And once there was this woman who tried to trick me by just putting and cutting the meat into very small pieces, putting it into the soup and serving it to me. I fell for this once, but never again. Thanks to my magical skills, which I acquired in long, laborious studies, I will now finally be able to distinguish meat and cheese. But first we need some samples. Laborious Evon Karam Baraza Abracarabra samples. Here we have our magical samples. I will show you one just to make sure that you actually see that we are not using tricks here. These are legitimate cheese versus meat samples. No buttons, no tricks, just a magical crystal ball and some magic words. Sierra Barankal Das Dambara Voras Spirits I evoke you show me this magical sample is it meat or cheese? Crystal ball show me Bring up the image. Hmm. I did expect a different result here. Hmm. And I did practice before, I promise you. But let's see, maybe there's some, some problem with spirit connection today. Maybe we need to reboot the magical crystal ball. Uh, let me see how to do this. Magical start button. Reboot this crystal ball. Make it whole again. Bring the spirits. Restore the connection. Connectivotum ad infinitum. Now let's try again, shall we? Mascara and bell powder and gunpowder and magical animals, giraffes and lions and magical spirits come and show me is this meat or is this cheese? What do we get for breakfast? Maybe they sold me a fake magical crystal ball. You know, I'm thinking. And just one more try. This one should be easy for you. Okay. Magical crystal ball. I evoke you. I evoke the image. The image of cheese. <coughs> I mean, I evoke the spirits to tell me what it is. You haven't heard that, have you? Mm, nothing. I guess we need to fall back to 21st century magic. Let's turn a new page. And you know, Arthur C. Clarke put it best. Any modern, modern technology sufficiently advanced is indistinguishable from magic. Let's uh, bring on the 21st century magic. Abracadabra! I think I need a new magic wand for this. Um, this particular magic wand has a magical Raspberry Pi with a Beam E688 breakout board, which was lovingly designed for, by us to directly fit onto the Raspberry Pi and can be used to measure all kinds of different values, air temperature, pressure, humidity and of course the magical gas resistance which helps us to detect the magical samples we have here. So let's try with the first one. 
going to show you what it is in just a minute. But the magic does take a little time. Right. Let's see. Some of the best German salami you can get. No. No cheese in it. Let's try with another one. Let's see. Well, let's take this one now for a little variety. We took great pains to actually ensure that we had some of the most pronounced smells uh, we could get so that the magic could work as expected. Let's give it another chance. It's the wrong one. Right, okay. Right, well, at least we're about 80% convinced this is cheese. And so it is. Do we have some more samples for you? See if we can actually accelerate this. Ah, okay. Wonderful. This little magical sample was detected correctly. Uh, let's try the last one, which the crystal ball had trouble detecting. Hopefully this will work better. At least I can detect it very well. It's slowly changing its mind. Maybe you can accelerate it using some magical spells. So let's see. Raspberries and apples. Raspberries and apples. You see, overnight I have become a magician using electronics. Well, I think it's time to wrap. I'll show you the sample. And in the next segment, what we're going to do is we're going to give you, or I'm going to give you, an introduction to the way this magic actually works, when it works. Um, and a in little introduction into artificial intelligence, into gas sensors, and how modern 21st century magic works. Thank you very much for joining our little magical show today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm looking for Arthur C. Clarke has a great quote, or actually a law, which says, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Imagine how our forefathers might have reacted to the modern internet and other things. And in a similar way, the detecting smells using the computer and actually being able to tell, okay, uh, this smells like cheese, this smells like meat, or there's possibly a raspberry pie cake in the room, um, does seem rather magical, doesn't it? Let's look into it and see what we can actually learn about uh, the magic, um, how it actually works. We're using a sensor called the Beam E688, that's uh, this breakout board, uh, which we've designed ourselves. Uh, there's the sensor on top of it, and it plugs right onto a Raspberry Pi. The different smells in the room are a mixture of so-called VOCs, or volatile organic compounds. They're called organic because they have these carbon atoms, um, which basically most life is built of, um, if not all of life on this planet. And here, for example, I've uh, 
showing you the structures, the chemical structures of two of these compounds. One of them is uh, the compound for vanillin, uh, which is the a big part of the vanilla smell and, uh, and flavor. And the other one is a very similar one, but which looks a bit different and which has some different properties, which is called 4-anisaldehyde. Um, which uh, I've included because it's a major component of a raspberry flavor. What actually happens uh, in this sensor is that it uh, degrades these substances to carbon dioxide and water, H2O, and CO2. Uh, and it does this by essentially heating them and uh, allowing natural uh, reactions to take place uh, using the oxygen which is in the air. It basically burns them. And the magic is actually in using different heating profiles. So you see these different steps here. Uh, what we do is actually that we run uh, the sensor at one heating profile for a certain amount of time and note the so-called gas resistance. Uh, I'm going to get to that in a moment. Then we heat the sensor for a second, for for a higher level, for a second amount of time, and a third level, and so on. And we note the different changing values of the gas resistance. Now, what happens is if you increase the temperature, then these chemical reactions to degrade the VOCs will take place faster but they will not be equally faster for all the compounds of which the air is composed of. So we get, depending on the mixture of VOCs in the air, we get different outputs. So if there's more meat in the room, then there will be a different behavior of these steps than if there's more cheese in the room, or let's say raspberry pie flavored cake, or jasmine flowers, or vanillin, or whatever. And uh, essentially, I've talked, I've mentioned this term gas resistance. This is a term used by Bosch to denote uh, the actual um, output value of a sensor, which indicates how many VOCs are present. What happens is that we have a semiconductor, and if oxygen can bind to the top layer of this semiconductor, then uh, the the electrons are uh, bound to the oxygen, so they can't uh, flow freely. Now, if VOCs come into the picture and they start to be uh, to, to absorb these uh, oxygen molecules and react with them, then there's a relative oxygen depletion at the semiconductor layer. And we see that the semiconductor actually conducts electricity better. So the gas resistance drops. That's uh, essentially the way the magic is done. So we're indirectly measuring how much oxygen is present in this uh, small area uh, next directly next to the sensor. And this depends on the VOCs and uh, the reactivity as determined by these steps and the actual temperature we're applying to the sensor. What happens next? Okay, now there's a second step involved in this magic, which is uh, the artificial neural networks. These are in a way called artificial because they're modeled after what happens in our own brain. And uh, what happens is that we have data inputs. These are the different values uh, the sensor measured at each of the resistance profiles, maybe also the humidity and other things it can measure. These are then put through a mathematical a series of mathematical operations, which are indicated by these arrows and circles. So essentially all uh, the data from the first layer, as it's called, is passed on to the second layer and it's uh, run through a special function uh, called, I think, the sigmoid activation function. And depending on the weights, so uh, we can say, okay, this this neuron here, it has inputs from all the other, um, from all the data of the first layer. And depending on the weight we give to 
a certain connection of this. So this could be zero, this could be 0 0.5, this could be 0 0.7, whatever, this 0 0.2. And depending on that, this will depend on part of the input in a nonlinear fashion. And then uh, we can take the input, uh, the results of this layer <coughs> of the mathematical calculations, which are done, and pass them into this layer here. Again, using like uh, every neuron of this layer connects to every neuron of this layer, using different weights. That's the important bit, the different weights. Um, we can have different outputs and results here, which again depend in a very nonlinear fashion on the original inputs because they've already gone through one nonlinear function. Um, and then finally, we do the same thing again to get to our output layer. Now this is uh, just a schematic, so the actual way it might work with uh, the Bosch software, uh, in this case called the BSEC uh, library, which is used in order to, de uh, to, to train and detect these uh, smells. It might have a, a different layout, but this is just to give you a general idea. So what we actually want is we, we, we have this thing, and this is just pure mathematics. So once this is calc uh, once we have found the weights, this is always going to be the same mathematical operation. So we're just going to to calculate from our input values. We're going to calculate intermediate values, and then uh, the next intermediate values, and then finally we're going to get the final values. And this, by the way, is also how um, most of um, modern like magical machine learning technology works uh, called deep uh, deep learning uh, so what we actually want is a way to find the weights so these numbers which are actually the algorithm itself so the numbers in which uh, which we need to 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 apply the weights to so how much weight we need to give to each input for the next layer. And these numbers, we calculate them by using a procedure called AI training. So uh, we essentially collect data using a sensor, also for, uh, like an array of sensors uh, in the case of Bosch, uh, the same BME688 sensor. We have uh, samples of cheese, meat, or whatever we want to measure and distinguish and usually also just pure air. We calculate, uh, we, we take these measures and then uh, we train this uh, artificial neural network. We find the weights and there's a software which does this and this uh, Bosch has provided a software called AI Studio for to do this. And then once these weights are calculated, we get a file which contains these weights and which then using the proper software can be applied to actually determine if there's meat or cheese in the room um, or close to the sensor. How this exact training is done is a bit beyond the scope of this presentation, but uh, there's a very good course on uh, Coursera by Andrew and G, which will introduce you into this topic. Um, and I've uh, actually gone through this course myself, and I think it's probably in the grasp of most uh, people to understand how this actually works. Basically, mostly mathematics. For the rest of us who don't want to dive deeply into this struggle with making things like this BSEC library work and code their own thing, uh, luckily there's an application called PyCockpit.com. Now, PyCockpit is our platform to make the Raspberry Pi really easy to use. It's a web interface, and what we already have in it today is an application called BME688 Air Meter App, uh, which allows you to measure the air quality. Uh, here you see, for example, again, the gas resistance, which we've uh, talked about before. Um, the air temperature, the air humidity, the air pressure, these are standard values which you get out of a sensor. And then... Um, of course, uh, there's many more, which the so-called BSEC will calculate for you, like the estimated CO2 value uh, in, in the room, which also correlates to the, um, to the VOCs. 
And um, what we're doing right now and working on right now uh, is the Beam E688 digital nose app, which will do smell detection for you. What you, the only thing which you will need to provide is you need to go to the web interface at pycockpit.com, log into your account, and drop a file which uh, has these um, weights, as we discussed, which you obtain from AI Studio, and then you can simply start to measure and identify the different smells. Of course, PyCockpit is not uh, just about the Beam E688 sensor. We do have some other very useful apps to control your GPIO, to run tests on your Raspberry Pi, to, for example, identify which model it is, which serial it has, where it was manufactured, um, the amount of RAM, of free disk space, then uh, the ability to run commands and so much more. If you're interested, then check it out today. It's uh, at https uh, colon slash slash pycockpit.com. And uh, yeah, just give it a try. It's free, nothing to lose, right? Thank you for uh, being a part of this presentation today, looking uh, at it. I'm, I'm very curious and interested about your feedback. Leave it below and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day.